All right, we're working on a 2000 Chevy Cavalier. It's already identified. We're using the Varus. Uh, what you're looking at on the screen right here is uh, trouble codes that are on this car, so we've already pulled them up. Uh, we've been recently talking about idle air controls and and uh, how to identify vacuum leaks and things like that in class and we have a vehicle where I think we can emphasize this topic and so this would go hand in hand with uh, section one which in section one in my book we're talking about uh, the difference between a map and a mass airflow engine with a vacuum leak how the reaction is I have two case studies in there on that and then also uh, section 20 which we've been talking about the last couple days, which is idle air controls, idle speed controls, and how the computer is going to, uh, uh, the differences in the designs and how the computer is going to control the idle speed. So this is gonna go well with those two sections. We're, go we're going to address this, this P0507 trouble code, which is idle control system, RPM too high. And one of the things that I've told my guys, and I'm telling you now too, is that just because you have an idle control trouble code does not mean you need an idle air control motor or an idle speed control motor. So we have one and what we want to do next is we want to walk through some of the data parameters that we want to look at as far as direction and what's causing this trouble code. Okay so the next place we're going to go is uh, we're going to go to our data stream and we're going to pull up some data that's related to the idle air control system. We'll go to custom because I don't want to look at all of these data parameters. I, don't, I only want to look at certain ones. Idle air control, we'll look at short term, long term because we did have a lean exhaust trouble code in there too. Uh, we'll look at throttle angle, RPM, upstream O2, desired idle, important. We'll also look at our map voltage. And uh, I think that's pretty good for what we're going to look at. We'll go to list, and our next step is we're going to focus right now on this idle air control position, which is this guy. We have 57 counts with the engine off. Uh, can you reach in and start that for me? And let's watch this number. Okay, so right away we see a problem. And that, that is that you should never see a zero uh, count on an idle air control motor. This is a stepper motor type idle air control system. That means the motor is moved in steps. Again, see section 20 in my book for more information on that. We've been covering that in class the last couple days. Uh, a zero count means that that computer has wound that motor in all the way and it cannot lower the idle speed anymore. And if you look at a couple other things here, um, you'll notice that my RPM is about 800, 850, somewhere in that range, moving around. And the desired idle is 600. And so we have a discrepancy here, and that is that the computer wants the idle to be at 600, we're at 800, and that's a problem. Uh, but the issue is the computer cannot lower the idle speed anymore. Now this is a speed density engine, or it is a map engine if you want to call it that, in short. There is no mass airflow sense. And one of the things that happened with a map engine, with a vacuum leak, which is what we're looking at here, is a map engine will generally idle higher than normal. And the reason for that, the map sensors are made in put for engine load. When you have a vacuum leak, that map sensor is going to sense that manifold pressure change with a little bit slightly higher voltage on the map signal, computer's gonna react and inject fuel to account for that lean condition, or in this case, it's really not lean. Look at our short term and look at our long term. Just looking at those two data parameters, you would not say that this engine has a vacuum leak. But the reason why our fuel trim numbers look normal, at least right now, is this map sensor is indicating this additional airflow computers giving fuel based on the map and so we truly don't have a lean condition so we have air and we have fuel and what's that going to do to the idle speed it's going to raise it as we see here and so what I'm telling you guys one of the red flags for a vacuum leak on an engine if you got a zero IEC count on, the, on a stepper motor type idle air control that screams vacuum leak so the next thing that we're going to do 
um, is we're going to smoke test this engine and see if we can locate this. Now what we did find is when the brake pedal is depressed that the car stalls. And so there's a real good chance that our brake booster is giving us an issue. Let's see the result of uh, a smoke test now. Okay, so we have a smoke tester um, on the intake and um, we have some smoke coming out of the throttle. Uh, and this is pretty typical for a lot of cars having smoke come out of the throttle shaft. It would just be from uh, a, a worn out shaft um, and it's really not excessive. I mean, there's a good bit there, but I'm not seeing that be enough to give me the idle speed condition that I have. Um, I don't think that's enough of a leak and that doesn't match when we step on the brake pedal that the car stalls. So we we're focused on the brake booster for sure and we're not seeing any smoke whatsoever coming around the brake booster. Shine that light, there you go. So no smoke at all and uh, what we realized is brake boosters have check valves on them and we're trying to blow smoke into the booster and that's not going to happen with that check valve there. So let's uh, go ahead and swap that, pull that, <coughs> pull that hose out of the brake booster and put our, uh, our uh, smoke machine adapter into that point into that uh, hole right in the booster itself so we're getting our check valve out of the way and then we want to uh, look real close at this brake booster now let's kind of blow all that smoke out for a second and there you go this booster is shot there is a ton of smoke coming out of there uh, that matches our symptom of when we step on the brake pedal that the car stalls because it makes the vacuum leak even worse. Uh, our main problem with this car is it needs a brake booster to fix this vacuum leak. So confirmed again vacuum leak uh, using the idle air control counts. Uh, you would not have known this car had a vacuum leak based on the fuel trim numbers at least while we were looking at it. Uh, it did have a lean exhaust code but at least at idle from that point, we were not seeing a lean condition. Idle air control counts was key. Uh, this car also has a few other codes, but as far as the idle control error trouble code, and I'm gonna think the lean exhaust trouble code we had too, a brake booster is gonna take care of that. So that's it, using idle air control motor position and counts and determining whether or not you have a vacuum leak. Okay, I want to show you guys one other thing you can do if you don't have a smoke machine and you think you have a, a bad brake booster um, is you can just pinch off the, the uh, vacuum hose going to the booster and see how the idle is affected. Go ahead and do that. You hear the idle change? Okay, let it go. Give it a second. Don't pinch it yet. Let this idle air control motor change. You gotta pinch it real quick. That just about stalled the engine out. And the reason for that almost stalling is the idle air control motor is being buried at zero, so closing off the passage. And when you pinch that hose off, you're taking the rest of the air away. Car, car may stall, you gotta do it again. So we stalled the car out by pinching that off. And again, that's because the idle air control valve was at zero, closing all the bypass air. You pinch that hose off, you just took all the air away from the engine, car stalled out, computer did not and was not able to react fast enough with the idle air control valve. So what we're gonna do now, I'll go back to the scanner, I'll show you what the IAC counts look like with this hose blocked off. Okay, so we're back on the scan tool. Looking at the IAC counts on the right hand side, I'm at zero. Go ahead and pinch that off. Do it slowly so we don't stall the motor. Okay, go all the way now. You see the computer reacting. Opening the idle air control motor back up. Accounting for our lack of a vacuum leak now. So we're about 30 counts. I have a desired idle of 625 and I have an idle speed that matches an RPM that matches and again typical range for an idle air control on a GM is around 30 counts with no accessory loads in park that's exactly what we have 
So that further reinforces um, that our throttle body that has a minor leak. We really don't need to worry about that right now. The fuel trim numbers look good. It is a MAP engine. We're not overly concerned about it. That is a fix. It will be a fix anyway when they change this brake booster. So that's it. One last time, a vacuum leak affecting how the car is idling without affecting the fuel trim. And that's because it's a MAP engine. This can happen. Be careful with these. Use your idle air control motor valve position to guide you as to whether or not you have a vacuum leak.